a country far, far away. There lived a man named Martin Luther, who would begin the great Protestant Reformation of 1517. Martin, what is wrong? I just don't understand. How can I, being a sinful man, ever deserve to be forgiven of my sins and being accepted with God? I know. You could fast more. That could help you lose some weight. You could pray more and confess your sin more. <laughs> but then what if I sin after that? This is a never-ending cycle! How can I ever be saved? Do you have any suggestions, teacher? Martin, you need to take your eyes off your own sin. Look in faith to Christ and what he has done on the cross for your sins. But, but that is completely the opposite of what the Catholic Church teaches. The Pope and priests tell us that faith alone isn't enough. We need to do this and do that in order to be good to earn salvation. But we know we're not good. We're sinners, sinners, sinners. <laughs> we could buy a donkey sins to reduce our sins. But this just does not make any sense. If Christ paid the price for our sins, what need is there for another payment of indulgences? Ah. <gasps> As Martin continued to pray and search the scriptures, he was led to Romans 1.17 that said, The just shall live by faith. This discovery changed his life forever and gave him much peace. No one could ever earn his or her salvation. We simply receive it by faith alone, through grace alone, in Christ alone. Martin said he felt reborn and everywhere he looked in the Bible, he now saw good news. But Martin was bothered that his church was telling people that they could earn their salvation. So Martin decided to write a few ideas down that needed to change in the Roman Catholic Church. Actually, it was a lot. 95 to be exact. I have no money. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I need to buy indulgences so that I may be free from some of the punishment for my sins. I have written 95 theses against the selling of indulgences, my friend. 95 what? What in the world is a thesis? <laughs> I can't say it. Well, they are just complaints. My objections to the Pope. Oh, can you give me an example of one? Listen to thesis 86. Why does the Pope, whose wealth today is greater than the wealth of the richest, Built the Basilica of St. Peter with the money of poor believers rather than his own money. Actual quote. Why do you think the church is wrong for selling indulgences? Have you ever heard of a pyramid scheme? They trick the poor and promise a false forgiveness of sins if they pay money for it. This is not found in the Bible. What about Jesus dying to forgive us of our sins? Exactly. I have written that I can no longer accept the selling of indulgences. I will pin the 95 Thesis to the door of the church today, October 31st, 1517. So you're not going to go trick-or-treating? Oh, Martin, I sure hope you are correct about this. I have no money to give, and I really want to be saved. Yeah, I'm so scared if I don't buy an indulgence, I will suffer for eternity. Do not worry. Soon you will be able to read the Bible in your language as well. You will read these truths in the scriptures for yourself. What do you mean? The Bible is only in languages that no one can understand, but the Pope and its priests. Do you mean that the common people will finally be able to read the Bible in their own language? That is my hope and my plan, if it be God's will. Everyone should be able to read the Bible for themselves to see what the Scripture teaches. And maybe one day people will even have an app on their phone to remind them to read the Bible. What's a phone? Luther would end up nailing a 95 Thesis to the door of All Saints Church in Wittenberg that day. Within a couple of weeks, it was translated so everyone could read the work. 
In just two short months, it spread all over Europe, and the start of the Reformation had begun. As the 95 Thesis spread, many questions would arise. How then could one be saved? How could someone find forgiveness of their sins? What are we going to learn about today? As we study the Bible, let's look at the glorious truth of justification by faith alone. A just a what? By faith alone? Sir, that's a really big word. Can you explain what that means? Of course, it is simple yet beautiful. We have all sinned, correct? And since God is holy, he must punish sin. So this should make everyone scratch their heads on how anyone can be saved. Correct! If we're all sinners and God punishes sin, doesn't that mean that we're all going to be punished and nobody can be saved? Ooh, I know. We need to do a bunch of good deeds. More than bad deeds. So we can be forgiven. Am I right? Can I get an amen? Wrong. We will never be good enough. This is where I return to the fact that we are justified by faith alone. When anyone puts their faith in Jesus Christ, they are really forgiven of their sins. That can be all right. Surely we need to do something to be saved. No, it is really by faith alone. When one believes that Jesus paid the price for their sins, and when someone repents and puts their trust in Jesus Christ, they are forgiven. The Holy Spirit is given to the true believer so that they can now live a life pleasing to God. Whew. It's so beautiful that God accepts us, not based on our good works, but based on the very good work of Jesus. Say what? Very good. Class dismissed. Hooray! As expected, not everyone liked what Martin Luther was doing. The Roman Catholic Church did not like the gospel that he was spreading. He was called by the Roman Catholic Church to be questioned at the Diet of Worms. Look, it's Martin Luther. I not like you. We want you to take back everything you said about a Catholic church and our beliefs. We want to tell everybody you're wrong and we're right. Do you stand by what you said? Um, I just posted it on my Twitter feed before I got here. Unless if I am convinced by the scriptures that I am wrong, I cannot go back on what I said. I am bound to the scriptures. Here I stand. I can do no other. May God help me. That man is a good speaker, isn't he? No, he's not. We're going to have to excommunicate. You are a heretic. A heretic of the Catholic Church isn't the worst I could be now, is it? Huh? By God's grace, the Roman Catholic Church was never able to silence Martin Luther. Thanks to some friends, he was able to hide out in a castle until things settled down. During that time, he translated the New Testament into the German language, and Luther's writings and ideas spread quickly all over Europe because of a new invention called the printing press. The Reformation had begun. The Reformers summed up their beliefs with five solos, or five alones. They said scripture alone taught that we are saved by faith alone, through grace alone, in Christ alone, for the glory of God alone. That's a lot of alones. Luther broke many of the chains that enslaved the followers of the Roman Catholic Church. Many others would join in on the fight with Luther. We are forever thankful for the Protestant Reformation.
Wait, who are you? I'm Dan. I can't even say it. <laughs>